I'm Agent Scott. And I'm Cam the Provocateur. And we're from the Spy Hards Movie Podcast. That's right. And you are listening to Pods Like Us, the podcast that has a license to thrill. Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us, Bite Size. I'm Martin Quibble, known to my friends as Marv. In this third and final part of my discussion with Lonnie Pena, we talk about his Beatles fandom, our shared history in the security industry, and Lonnie's favourite podcast shows. <laughs> Well, since you've gone there, what would you say is your favourite Beatles album? Oh, goodness. You know, hands down, I think it would be Meet the Beatles. Okay. Because that introduced me to the Beatles. That's another album, though, right? That's Um, true. But uh, it's weird, because I was so into, like I said, Yes, ELP, Amherst Lake and Palmer, Genesis, and and then Meet the Beatles. (laughs) That just... changed it for me yeah. uh, so that that to this day it, it would be the meet the beatles the u.s uh, well that's all they have meet the beatles i think later it was with the beatles or yeah. re- with the beatles in england but it had a different song listing absolutely yeah, yeah. Meet, meet the beatles was half it include the singles it also was a little bit of with the beatles and a little bit of please please me you know they had to get more for you know more albums in the u.s because of the money you know they could sell more yeah they were able to like you said songs that were just singles in the uk but not album songs that the american uh, capital would put them on their their albums so because the beatles were releasing so many in the uk non-album singles so frequently you'd you'd have two albums for every one album that we had essentially for the first four or five years of the Beatles. Yes, yes. And and I had so many, there were so many albums, Beatles 65, Beatles uh, 6, you know, whatever. I couldn't keep up with them. But those are the albums that I grew up with. So those those are the albums that I, I think of when I think of the playing the Beatles. This was in the 70s. And um, when the CDs were finally released in, I think, 86, maybe 87, yeah, it was. It was. Um, I don't. I don't play those CDs much, you know. Although um, Revolver in the U.S. was terrible. Okay. They took John Lennon. They took three John Lennon songs out of Revolver in the U.S. Wow. But Revolver, in the way it's supposed to be released in in uh, U.K., is the best. You know, it's 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 great. It's a great album. I think it's better than Sgt. Pepper. Uh, for many many reasons yeah um yeah but um yeah but so but meet the beatles to answer your question that's that's one of my favorite albums and that's i'm sticking to that (laughs) (laughs) i I can't even imagine revolver with with three songs missing off there yeah i'm only uh i said what was it uh i can't remember just off the top of my head i'm um i'm only sleeping that wasn't on that was off wow what else was off? Uh, what are the other John Lennon songs on the album? 
I'm oh, guessing they, they didn't they didn't get rid of Tomorrow Never Knows, did they? That was that was the only John Lennon song I think on the Revolver. I don't have my cheat sheet up in front of me. Oh, so you've not got she said so she said she said um, I'm only sleeping, uh, Doctor Robert. Yeah, that was not on there. Can you believe that? No, I can't. I really can't that was, believe that they're not. That on was there. not on. That was on the Butcher album. Okay. The Beatles yesterday and today. Wow. I call it the Butcher album. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do know what you're talking you know, about. Yeah. And, but that was an album called Yesterday and Today. It was Yesterday's Hits. It was like a compilation of Yesterday, a couple of other songs that were previously released, and then Today, which was some of Revolver. Wow. And it was released like maybe three or four months before Revolver. Okay. So we had the revolvers, some revolver songs on this release months before it appeared in in UK. Um, revolver. Wow. So you heard those songs before we did over here. Wow. Yeah. But then when we got the re- we got revolver later, <laughs> it was chopped up. <laughs> wow. You it, know, it was butchered. It was dissected. They should have yes. called that the butcher album. They should. <laughs> It was, t- it, yeah, so I was not big on Revolver until, of course, the albums, the the CDs were released, and then the whole world was on the same platform. So did, did all that change with Sgt. Pepper's then? Is that the first one where they stopped doing that? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Sgt. Pepper, White Album, and then uh, Let It Be, Abbey Road. Now, we did get another album in the U.S., a compilation called uh, Beatles... Hey Jude. That is a good compilation. That was released in February, I believe, in 1970, a few months before Let It Be. Um, I think um, the Beatles knew they had broken up already, but I don't think the public may not have known at that time. But that was an odd album. That was one of the last Beatle albums that I bought um, because I didn't know what it was. No. You know, I just looked, I said, what is this? I don't remember seeing this on the catalog. <laughs> and this was in the 70s. And when I looked at the album, I had all the songs already. You know, I should have known better. That's on there. Can't Buy Me Love. I already had that. I had the 45. <laughs> hey Jude, I have the record. I have the 45. Mm-hmm. You know, Old Brown Shoe. Have that already. I have the 45. So I finally broke down and bought that album because the cover was really cool yes yeah their long hair and and they were really cool looking in that doorway is that the one yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. so what other podcasts do you listen to then lonnie well i get like i mentioned though i i listen to i still listen to the fab four free for all yeah listen to that listen to that bizarre albums that's that's a good one um, I listen to his podcast. It's not necessarily a music podcast, but I started listening to it because Paul McCartney was on this podcast. It was okay. it's called Smartless. Wow. Smartless with Jason Bateman, yes. Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett. Uh, uh, Justin Bateman and Will Arnett were on Arrested Development, the U- uh, U.S. Uh, TV series, and they uh, someone recruited Paul McCartney. He appeared on their podcast. Uh, last year. Wow. So that's a good one. Uh, Pods Like Us. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. And, and a few others, you know, miscellaneous. Um, I don't listen to when they was fab. Don't listen to that one. though. That's, that's one I don't listen to. So you don't listen to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear myself. No. I'll listen to Ed when he's on with, with Ethan or with okay. you, if you, if you, your guest. Uh, again and occasionally he'll have kit o'toole on with him or somebody else <laughs> oh i love kit she's yes. awesome yeah she is she's, she's she'll fill in for me and then we'll have her as a guest i think i think last summer she was on all summer because when i was out <laughs> they nicknamed, nicknamed it the summer of kit yeah, summer of kit the previous to that we had the summer of darren he's yes, a, a local musician yes. in texas darren murphy for everybody that wants to know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's an awesome musician, he not is. only a drummer, but also a, a musician, a, a all-around musician. Yeah, a crack guitarist, really good at guitar. Yeah, yeah. you've heard, you, did you listen to those episodes where he was 
playing uh, on that um, on the Gibson. Yes, I did. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I miss. Uh, yeah, I just I miss. You know, that's what living in California. I, I really, especially during COVID, I cannot meet new people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, new, no new friends. You know. Oh, dear me, it's terrible. I haven't even been going in. You know, ma I'm in management, so I do go in every once in a while to work, but mostly it's 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 on the laptop. You know, team meetings and. And uh, I do, but there is an incident because I'm a safety manager. I, I do have to, I do go visit some of the locations to, to do follow ups and whatnot. Okay. But yeah, we're still on lockdown. Are you able to get out, Marv? Do you get out at work? Um, yeah, I, I have to drive around and check sites, yeah. so I, I get to go around and, and uh, some areas yeah. are nice where I get to go out where where, it, where it's um. Well, it's like in the middle of nowhere, so you get nature around you, which is quite nice. So they get the fresh air that way. No, oh, that's good. That's good. When I worked security at the plant, manufacturing plant, back in the 70s and 80s, we would carry around this huge clock. And we yes. would go to the different locations to do a punch. What was it called? It was a clock that had like a little paper in there. So you prove that you're at that location. You know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about because they were still in operation when I started. <laughs> Etrix, I forgot the name of the clock. It was the Something name of a like company. That, yeah. yeah. It was a key punch clock. Yeah. And yeah, it used to, this thing used to come out of it to prove that you'd actually got gone there and done your checks. Yeah, there was a little graph, a little graph, and the, the key would make an indentation in the graph and the time that that little graph would go around. Yeah, there were like little mobile versions of the clocks you used, the clocking systems you used to have in factories. Yeah, and it was heavy, you know. Yes. I had to carry it around my neck, my shoulder, and could have used it as a weapon if I had to. <laughs> <laughs> but now, they, I guess they don't even do that, right? There's like a little wand that you ping. That, that's true, yeah, we have a little thing. But some companies, they actually do it with phone apps where you just walk around and it's oh, on a yeah, GPS. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, okay. we we don't do it that way, but some companies have got software like that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, cool. Well, what else we got going on? What other fantastic questions do you have for me? Well, my next question is: What advice would you give to anybody wanting to start their own podcast? Don't do it. <laughs> just joking. Just joking. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. You know, if you have a passion for anything. Whether it's a podcast, whether it's a radio show, or whether it's YouTube, just do it. You know, pace yourself. Okay, not everyone could be like Ed. No. I, if I did a podcast, that would come out once every quarter, <laughs> once every three months, you know. But yeah, just pace yourself. Don't overproduce it. Ed does keep it pretty slim and doesn't overproduce anything, which is great. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Um, I did. I did some TV shows back in the '80s. I was an independent producer, Marv. Okay. And I, I did some shows for the Public Access Channel. I did like 15 shows over a course wow. of four years, and I would script everything. I would script everything to a T. There was no ad libbing. Okay. Well, I don't advise that for a podcast. <laughs> like, we're not scripting here. If you want to script a little bit, man, we have a little agenda, but, you know, when you're interviewing people, kind of let the flow uh, go with with what the person is saying. And as you do, you do greatly. Thank you. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just pace yourself. Don't don't get bogged down with, with I've got to do it now. I've got to do, I got this, I got a deadline because you're going to, I think quite easily you can overstress yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, goodness, we don't need any stress. There's enough stress these days with other things. There so is. That, that would be my advice. Definitely. So, Lonnie, where, where can people get hold of you if they want to? Uh, well, you can uh, build a fire, send some so smoke signals in the air. <laughs> but uh, that probably won't work. Um, just, you know, when they was fab, uh, there's a Facebook page. 
and I'm, I'm par partially administrator. So if you send me a message through that platform, I will get it. Um, I'm on Facebook, but that's a personal page, and, and it's mainly for friends that I know, okay, like yourself, yes, and family members. So I, I try to keep it limited to folks that I, I actually know, and uh, and have, you know, but yeah, through when they was fab, Facebook page. Okay, thank you very much, Lonnie. No, I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you so much. It's it's been a pleasure speaking to you for the first time. You too, and I look forward to speaking to you when I'm on When They Was Fab again sometime soon. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lonnie. I'll let you get on with your day now. That was that was great. All right. Nice talking to you. You take care. Okay. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Once again, I'd like to thank Lonnie for talking with me, and I hope that you all enjoyed all three parts of my discussion with Lonnie about when they was fab and his history in music. Now we're going to look at five shows that are talking about the Beatles and the solo Beatles. First up is Paul or Nothing. In this show, the host, Sam Wiles, is responding to hearing Paul McCartney albums for the most part for the first time. Sam was a guest in episode 3 of season 1 of Pods Like Us. The second suggestion is Fans on the Run. In this Ethan Alexadian chats to Beatles fans to find out the stories behind their fandom. Ethan was a guest on episode 7 of season 2 of Pods Like Us. The third suggestion, Beatles Books, is a show where Joe Wisby, who is a self-confessed fanatic of books, owning, I think, four or five hundred different books about the Beatles. He chats with writers and fans of the books to find out the stories behind why the books were written, why the subjects were chosen, and the legacy that those books leave behind. Joe was on episode 2 of season 2 of Pods Like Us. The fourth show I'd like to suggest is a show called Producing the Beatles and in this series Jason Cooper takes a look at specific production styles that are used in the music of the Beatles. So we'll look into the history of techniques like reverse reverb and automatic double tracking and other production styles that are used in mixing and engineering. He goes into the nitty gritty of where this was used in the Beatles songs and where the initial ideas came from and how those ideas were brought about. I'm in discussions with Jason to be a guest in the future. The fifth show I'd like to suggest is a show called Winter of Discontent. In this one, the presenter goes through the Nagra reels, as they're called, because the sessions for Let It Be were recorded for film. There were what are called Nagra Reel recorders in the rehearsal spaces and the recording rooms. That's what they used to record dialogue on sets for films so that when they go into a recording studio to re-record the dialogue, to dub as they call it in the industry, it's so that they can get the diction and the rhythm correct for what their dialogue in the films. So all these sessions were recorded so that they could sync the film up to the sound and these, I think they're over 300 hours worth of footage, are called the Nagra Reels, and Nick is going through them all, explaining what's going on, who is in the spaces at those points, and what they're doing. So he will explain how things like little riffs that come out, that are just them messing about while they're tuning up or something, he'll explain that eventually this riff will be used for that, or something, or this song, that he started with these lyrics so you know if, if John's doing a song uh, I think there was a song called Child of Nature for instance he will explain that eventually about two years later that song will have a completely new set of lyrics and be called Jealous Guy and um, it's a show that's under half an hour long and it's interesting and uh, I'm also in discussion with, uh, with Nick for him to appear as a future guest as well. 
Anyway, thank you for listening, and I hope you uh, listen again to another episode of um, Pods Like Us. Take care. Welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Quibell, known to my friends as Marv, and this time I am joined by Ryan Lane and Avery Desmond from Frame by Frame, an analysis of King Crimson. From Live Life Loud, the Decibolic podcast, my friend Dave Belknap, retired attorney and presenter of Snapshots and Dinner and a Dot Dot Dot, Mr. Blaine DeSantis. Agent Scott Hardy and Cam Smith, the provocateur from Spy Hard. Pods like us for pods like you. Pods like us for pods like you.